Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where we discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today we're looking at Cities Skylines from Cosmos Games. Quick disclaimer that I was given a review copy of this game. I've been a fan of city building video games like Sim City since I was a kid, but it wasn't until last year playing Sprawlopolis that I realized how much fun it could be on a tabletop. So how does a big board game like Cities Skylines match up to the little micro game that could? Let's find out and get to the list. We're going to start here with a mix, and that's how the game plays solo and co-op. Both modes have their positives and their problems. With solo play, you're 100% engaged with the puzzle at all times. But because you have such a small number of cards in your single hand, you are much more at the mercy of luck and randomness and just getting the wrong cards for your city's current situation. Meanwhile, with co-op, you have a much wider variety of cards to look at, and you can chain into each other, building something that somebody else can build off of for great effect. But the negative side here, and a bad design decision in my opinion, is that they say to have all your cards face up, which can create a huge alpha player problem and really limit communication, because I can just look at your hand and see what you have to play. So my suggestion to make this a pro, at least for co-op, is to play with your hands closed and have to actually talk to each other. My number four is another mix, and those are the milestones that move your city forward and the happiness you're trying to accrue to build your score. On the positive side, the choice of when to trigger a milestone is really interesting, because you'll bank whatever happiness you've built up, so you want to wait and get that as high as possible, but as the board fills up, your options will decrease and decrease, and you want to flip a new board tile and really expand your possibilities. But on on the negative side, your options for gaining that happiness can feel fairly random, so whether your score goes really high or low can feel a little fickle. Also in the end, this is mostly just a game of shooting for the highest score. Yes, you can lose if your city doesn't survive until the end of the game, but if you win, you're just saying, oh, I got more happiness than last time, yay for me. But we get into our first full pro with number three, and that's the placement of buildings and the polyomino puzzle the game provides. The game boards are divided by roads into districts, and the buildings in each district can have a pretty major effect on the bonuses you get or the penalties you suffer. Most of the residential, commercial, and industrial areas you construct will gain bonuses and money for you if they're next to the correct service building. And finding and maneuvering the right shape to get as many of them next to each other as possible while avoiding something else you might not want is a lot of fun and keeps the game pretty interesting. But we're back to a mix for my number two, a pretty major one that tends to lean a little bit con, and that's the variety in the game. When you first open the game, the variety seems amazing because they have all these modules. So you think you can play the basic game and then add in player powers, add in unique buildings, all this cool stuff. And to an extent, that is true. I like all of the modules. The player powers are interesting and give some differentiation between characters. And I really like the headlines that incentivize or de-incentivize you from taking certain actions until they're cleared. But the issue here is that the game is really kind of simplistic and sort of dull until you add all the modules in. So I recommend doing that on your very first game unless you really want a simple time. And once you do that, the game just doesn't change enough. There aren't any big overarching differences from play to play. The character powers don't have that big of an impact. The headlines don't last that long. And you're going to see basically the same cards every time you play. This is the kind of game that I think would have been given a huge boost by some kind of major global effect that you draw at the beginning of every game that drastically changes what things are worth. Because as it is, your choices will seem somewhat similar play to play. But that doesn't change the fact that we're ending on a pro, and that's the choices that you make in balancing your resources. So your city has a lot of thematic sliders to manage. How much trash, how much crime, how much electricity, how much water you're providing. And basically every card you lay down, everything you construct boosts you in one thing but hurts you in another. This creates tough interlocking choices of which cards to play and gives the game the majority of its tension and strategy. But it also lends your city a real thematic feel of being an interconnected metropolis. It's fun, it's challenging, and sometimes just keeping your city alive feels like a great accomplishment. Overall, City Skylines has been a really enjoyable addition to the city building genre. If you like tough card play and agonizing choices of how to balance resources against each other, this could definitely be a game for you. And if you like little polyomino puzzles, that's just icing on the cake. But if you want a ton of variety, if you want the game to feel different every time it comes to the table, kind of like Sprawlopolis with its mixture of scoring goals making you do different stuff each time, you're not really going to get that here. City Skylines is a game that's good right now, but I think with another expansion or some fan-created content, it could be great. Good gaming, everyone, and I'll see you at the next stop.